welcome to this week's edition of the show. As usual, we have wonderful guests, but this week we have an amazing guest. All about inspiration. I am honored to have the wonderful Anne Mitchell with me today. Lovely to have you, lovely to see you. Lovely and thank you here, for taking time out of your extremely busy schedule yeah. to come and see us, because I know it's taken a while for us to coordinate the dates. It has, it has. How are you keeping up? I'm good, I'm very well, thank you. I'm very busy, which is not I know. Good. Yeah, I just, yeah. I'm on a roll at the moment, Barry. And we all want to be on a roll, don't yes, we? Yes, exactly. You know, we want exactly. to be on a roll so till we can't it. roll anymore. Yes, I want to work till I yeah. drop. Till it, that's yeah. it. Yeah. As I say, it's better to be needed every day and exhausted than not needed at all. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I think that's a kind of death, isn't it? That yeah. Not needed. And when you can't kind of galvanize yourself or motivate yourself, you know, very hard, I think. Yeah. When you don't have a goal, or, some, or when somebody doesn't want to give you a goal. Well, this is well, it, because yeah. how, how does it work for you, this, this role? Is it, you know, are you casting still? Do you still have to cast, or do you just, do the parts come to you? How does it work? A bit of both. Yeah. It's a bit of both. The parts come to me, which is lovely, but yeah. yes, I, have, I go to many castings. Right. And I'm videoed with tapes. And, uh, take so this is a natural for her, I mean. <laughs> 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 yeah, so you, yes, it's, it's a, bit a bit of both. both. Yeah, it's a bit of both, apparently. Right. Yes. Rupert Everett's just invited me to play the nurse in Uncle Vanya, which I'm very pleased And about. he's going to play... Yes, he'll play Uncle Vanya. Uh, he'll be Uncle Vanya, And right. direct it. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So this is theatre? Yes, yes, theatre. Where will it be opening? Uh, both. Right. It, normally, when plays want to come into town, they they often start at Bath. There's no guarantee, of course, that yeah. you come in or anything. You just uh, take pot luck. You know, you may come in, you may not. And I like Bath. Yeah. And I have a friend, my well, friends there, who um, own a castle. And yeah, oh, it's really? great. And I'm, I have, on other times, I've stayed in the turret of their castle. Beautiful. Yeah, they're lovely, lovely people. And they're very active in the refugee movement. And they're right. therapists who, you know, are helpful. Wonderful. The trauma being a refugee, of course. Right. Wow. Yeah. Now, your filmography is just so vast. I mean, it's bigger than... And I was in a panic reading through this, I have to say, thinking I'll never remember it all. But then I thought, calm down, because she'll remember most of it. <laughs> so as we're going through, yeah. she'll remember. Now, I mean, it starts from Z Cars, is what I saw. Yes, I think it goes back even before Z Cars. I think one of the first things I did... No, it goes back even then. When I was at drama school at these 15, just before I went to drama school, I was the secretary to two writers, John McGrath and Troy Kennedy Martin. Right. And Troy Kennedy Martin was the creator of uh, Z Cards. Yeah. And John McGrath wrote a series called, um, oh gosh, no, you see, I've forgotten. <laughs> this is terrible. But I know that name, John McGrath. That's yes, was... my, yes the, he was a very, very fine writer. <laughs> Uh, and he wrote this series, Diary of a Young Man. Right. And by that time, I got into the East 15 drama school. And I'm the first scholarship ever to the East 15. Really? The yes. first scholarship? Yes. Right. I'm the first uh, batch of students, Philip Headley, me, Robert Walker, um, others. Names. Yes. <laughs> Names. And uh, I was the first scholarship. And uh, they very kindly, John McGrath, and Troy came to see me at the at drama school, and I was playing Viola and Sebastian, right? Uh, in you know, and I I was enjoying it very much. But when they were coming, I got very, very nervous. nervous. Yes, as you would. But to my astonishment, they wrote a role for me in this series called Diary of a Young Man. So that was the first. And at what age was that? I must have been about. 24, right. I think, something like that. And one of somebody on a fan on, um, on Facebook found some pictures of me in that. Wow. And it was so extraordinary to see it. Just think, 
my God, did I look like that? Like that. <laughs> because you look back, I think most people do. That's I mean, the thing. Most actors are never happy with their photographs. You, you just think, oh God, I, I look so awful, I'm not this, I'm not that. And then, when you see them back in the day, yeah. and when you were young, you think, I think that's most people, isn't it? I think it's most, most people. people yeah. Regardless of what exactly. feel, oh, I don't like pictures, I, know, I don't exactly. think. And then you see pictures 30 years oh. later and you go, did I look did that I, good? Exactly. What, what was I worried what about? Was I, yeah, what was I, <laughs> <laughs> so it went back even further than Z Carl. Yes, it did. To that, and then actually, when I was at drama school, um, I, I was still at drama school, and I was offered a television role, and I was allowed to play it, and that was a Muriel Spark uh, uh, adaptation for television, one of the first, I think. Uh, Girls of a Slender Means, and I was in that. I played a right. small role in that. Now you said you made. You were in the major, was it, issue of Z Cars? It made it's history? Alive. No, the Last no, Live. The Z Cars was the, the Z Cars I did, which yeah. was written by John Watkins, right. was the last live Z Cars. So it was actually done live yes. initially? Yes. Wow. Yes. You think about it now, and you, I mean, my heart goes boom, boom, boom. But thinking, just about thinking of doing television live. Yeah. But then, it, well, there was no other, there was no alternative. That's what you did. You did it live. How did they cope? <laughs> well, they did. They did, but... they did cope. Well, I always say, how did we make movies without mobile phones? <laughs> you did. It's, you you did. did. It. it's true. Yeah, yeah. Now, growing up, where did you grow up? Stephanie. Stephanie, Stephanie Green. Real East Stephanie. End Girl. Yes, yes. Real East End Girl. Yeah. When did acting come into your mind that you thought, that's what I want to do, that's the path I want to take? I think I was five. Oh, as young as that? Yes, I was very young. I used to, uh, I mean, I dread to think what they must have thought of me, my school friends. <laughs> but I used to write plays and direct them and star in them on the gymnasium steps. And, uh, yeah, I did that all the time. From five, and that was it. Five or six, yeah. And, and then, then it got uh, more and more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. great momentum. And yeah. did you always love movies, going to... Yes, my mother yeah. was a great, uh, loved movies. We went three times a week. Wow, now that's a lot. I went to Saturday morning classes. Yeah. And then I went on Sundays to the French movies at the People's Palace. They would have, like... Um, European movies. Yeah. So I saw them, not at five, I saw them at like <laughs> yeah. kind of 12, 11, 12, that yeah. kind of thing. But yes, I was, uh, I was very imbued with movies. Yeah. I was very much in a movie world, very much. Yes. So you then thought, when did the official training start of acting? I first started, and this is strange, I think I was about 11. When I went to some classes, I may have been a bit older, right. I think I was 11, and I went to some classes at Toynbee Hall in Orgate East, which was a kind of community um, right. uh, centre. And the extraordinary thing is, with Uncle Vanya, which Rupert Everett is directing, we are going to rehearse at Toynbee Hall. So it's like a full circle. circle. Yeah. It's very extraordinary. Have you been back there since that, or is now <laughs> going to be the first time? I have been since back. Right. It, it was for maybe to give a workshop on something, you know, yeah. not often. I haven't yeah. been back often, but I've never been back to rehearse there. Right. So I found that very And that's strange. when it started for you and the official training started. Yes. <laughs> and was it encouraged by your parents? Because I'm you know, you're thinking, well, East London and in that era, mm -hmm. it was more come on, go out and earn a job, you earn some money to help the family and the Understandably. Yeah. Uh, first of all I was an only child. Oh, so lovely. It was lovely. Yeah, I was very lovely. The princess. Um, I guess so. In a way. Well, it was quite some it was the princess, but it was also quite mixed. Uh, they very much, my mother and my auntie and my grandmother brought me up. I was brought up by three very strong women. My mother was a remarkable woman, mm -hmm. absolutely remarkable. 
and she had to leave school at 13, of course, uh, because it was a very poor background. Yeah. Um, and my auntie too. But my mother always really wanted, I think, something to be better an for you. Oh, she wanted oh. something better for me. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. My whole family did. My mother was a waitress, my auntie was a cook, and my grandmother. Uh, was illiterate and couldn't read mm. or, or write, and uh, she was a cleaner. And they all three women wanted something better, better for me. me. They were but in, in, well, even sure. within those three, each one of them did better than the last. Like they did, your mother did a yes. bit better than your yes. her mother. Yes, 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 yes and she did. That's very true. And that's how and the my mother started. would have done had she not had to leave school at school thirteen. Also. Would have, uh, I think, had a remarkable career in. Um, Eventually, computers, because she was offered when my mum was working in the city somewhere. She really? Must have been, yes, she must have been about 50-ish then, maybe a bit younger. And she, the first computers, which you had to drop, you had to break walls down to bring in the computers. Yeah, because there were those huge yeah. structures. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. And mummy was asked to train to be it, but I think she was a little bit nervous. Yeah. I think she didn't feel confident enough yeah so i mean therefore uh yes there was a lot of uh how can I put expectations right me, a lot of hopes for me yes so, so they're putting the it on of, uh, on you to push yeah, you further and forth so they not really... so much like that but you carry the hopes especially if it's uh, uh poverty if you're from a background of which my grandmother was yeah uh, huge huge poverty um when she lost her husband, when she was 35, wow. over a weekend, he got pneumonia, and you know, on the Friday, and was dead on the Monday, which nowadays he would have had an antibiotic. Yeah. And she had three children to bring up. So there are your hopes. The hopes are put on. Oh no! Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So it was a mixed thing for me. Both a princess, but they certainly didn't want me to do anything domestic. Yeah. I didn't know how to do anything domestically. Really? No, they didn't teach me. Yeah, you know, and it's, it's funny, I was having a conversation just the other day with exactly what you're talking about, mm -hmm. and people saying, well, you know, if it was good enough for my grandmother to do, it's good enough for me to do. And I'm saying, but that's the biggest slap in the face for her, because she's been through everything that she's been through so that you can do better and not have to do that. Yes, exactly. I mean, I think there's an enormous respect for what that generation exactly. did. Enormous. But yes, of course they wanted us yeah, to, to do better. better. And also I was a child of the war. So right. after the war, the whole feeling in this country, of course, changed dramatically. Yeah. This became a labor country. It did, the welfare indeed. state yeah. was remarkable for working class people. This was the first time they ever had enjoyed health care. But well, yes, you know, because as I said, when the NHS first opened hospitals, exactly. queues of people around the blocks, you know, people that had had their babies at home and didn't get the health care that they needed, you know, and they were just flocking exactly. out. Exactly. So, you know, people now, they really have no idea. No, I, I think that's true. They have no idea of what it really is. To, yeah, to and as you were world. saying earlier about the vaccines and how yes. things are, in yes. your one street, you had polio, That's you had... Polio, TB, asthma, a mental illness, yeah, yeah. in the one yeah. street. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. You know, so with the vaccine... And they died. I mean, yeah. lady who had TB died, lady who had asthma died, and the polio child was okay. Yeah. Crippled. I mean, you know, just damaged. The legs were slightly damaged. Now I have to say, this lady shares a birthday with my mother. <laughs> <laughs> okay, they're a day apart. The 22nd, my mother's the 23rd. Um, but you played, I'm going to the end, and then we go back to the beginning, yes. called The Midwife. Yes. Loved it. BBC. And listening to you talking now, you're actually telling the story of your time that you grew up in, that yes. you know. Yes. Absolutely. Heidi Thomas, the creator of Called Midwife, wrote it for me. Right. And it was a wonderful opportunity, yeah, to bring what I knew. Yeah. What I knew all about that. I knew I knew at a very young age. Yeah. 
and my mother being a midwife as well, I was riveted because yeah. she'd worked the district and, you know, you playing the part and you're saying, well, I could have been a nurse yes. with your, gro with yes. your granddaughter. Yes. And you said, well, I could have been and I didn't have the learning because, yeah. as you're saying, the cycle, having to leave school exactly. young. But like her granddaughter. Yeah, she nurse, was able to, exactly. to get through. Which is why I think it was such a devastating blow to their relationship. Yeah. And I was it was moving. Well, I Very it. moving. <laughs> well, I was not, shall I say, riveted to widows. Because at that age, I was out running up and down. And it wasn't a TV addict. I have to say, I didn't get connected with widows until after. And then I was like, oh, now I see what they're talking about. And I was just riveted to this Anne Mitchell. Whatever Anne Mitchell did from then, I was just riveted, riveted, riveted. Wherever she did, whatever she did, wherever she went, I was watching. And then you were like playing these hard roles, which were really quite East End. Yes, that one was Yeah, it's almost playing what you come from yourself. Yes, I mean, this. Uh, I, I come from that background. Yeah. What I always wanted to do was to honor the women that I had been brought up The with. strong women. Yes, the yeah. strong women, the whole ethos of the East End. I made no blood boil yeah. when people would talk about. Uh, people from the East End being thick, yeah. you know, uh, having uh, no style. <laughs> Look at Alexander McQueen. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, that, that was in my blood. Yeah. I had a mission. Because I'd lived in the dark in movies yeah. as a child yeah. and watched many, many British movies where other middle class actors would play working class actors. And there was always, for me, a comment on the work, that they were always commenting on the working class characters, oh, aren't they funny? You know, they're there for a bit of a laugh, mm. and that kind of thing, yeah. you know? So it was in my blood yes. to say, uh, that's, I couldn't articulate it, but that's what I wanted to bring to the screen. To the screen, yeah. Was uh, an East End, Working class London woman, bright, with strong. style, exactly, yeah. bright and sharp and smart. Yeah. And of course, Linda Lafont wrote such a wonderful book. writing. But there's also another novel, wonderful writing, wonderful. And it was wonderful for me when I first read the script because I thought this is first of all an amazing thriller. Yeah. yeah. And this is incredible. Four women yeah. are going to lead this female uh, producer, female writer, you know, except female executive producer. Right. Um, but I also thought this is a study of grief and romantic obsessional love between Dolly and Harry. Yeah. And so to get that as well as the thriller element was like it was was of course a gift, a gift from heaven. It was a gift, a total yeah, gift. gift from heaven. Harry, no question of that. Yeah, but so uh, powerful, yeah. and as you say, it covered all areas. The love, yes. which is even can you say her vulnerability, yes, uh, her softness, her gentleness. Yes. You know the love yes. for this man. Yet she was still strong enough and smart enough to be able to pull them together. Yes to do something Absolutely. positive for them because she was the one that said, well, you know what, we need to do something yeah, here. Exactly, exactly. Rather than just grieve and cry. Of <laughs> you know? And it was very extraordinary the way I got it. Right. Um, I, as I understand it, the casting director, Marion Jones, who's part of uh, said right at the beginning, there's only one actor to play this. As I understand it, right, that's what I heard. Right. But of course, uh, Ian Swanton, everybody wanted to see a whole load of actors. Yeah. But before I was seen for Widows, 18 months before, the director, Ian Swanton, had seen me for um, Chinese Detective. Right. right? Oh, oh, very wow. lovely. Yes, yeah, series. Yeah. Yeah. It was lovely. And they gave me the pages, and for the first time in my life, 
I counted the lines. I'd never done it before. And there were six. And I was to play Stephen Burkhoff's sister. Stephen was a guest star. And I was to play his sister with six lines. And I was at real school with Stephen. I was about 41, something like that. Mm -hmm. I was working as a receptionist. And I was working as a, well, I was a single parent. I was working with receptionists during the day, and I was working as a barmaid at night. And I read these three lines, uh, six, sorry, six, I'm reducing them. I'm reducing them, <laughs> reducing them and two by the end. <laughs> two by the end, my tail. Um, and I'd also started, I'd only been a month in therapy, about a month. And uh, I read them for Ian, the director, I read them with him, and he said at the end of it, that's love, uh, fabulous, we'd love you to do it. And I said, no, I'm worth more than that. It's the first time that I'd ever said that. That did, yeah, because it to your confidence Ian. by then, it's Well, it wasn't was. confident, I don't know what it was, Barry, I wouldn't say it was confidence. Com okay. It was, a, it was a deep cry in my soul that to say, if you, if this is all, this, business and profession That's can awesome. offer me, then I'm going to move away, as it were. Right. And 18 months later, when Marilyn Johnson put my name forward to Ian, he said, that's the kind of pride we need. It, you put it out in the universe, and you know, it's, it's so true when you say everything happens as it's supposed to. It might not happen the way we want it to at the time, but it happens as it's supposed to. That was what you were supposed to do, not to take that I, role. I guess so. And that's the strength so. that he wanted yes, the role, guess, however was, many months later. Yes, it, it was. Yes, yeah. But even then, they went through, and then I had to do audition, of course, and, and all of that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's quite a fascinating... But what I love about you is, you play different people. Yes. Now, there's some actors and actresses that, to me, they are always themselves, mm -hmm. regardless which role they're in. Mm -hmm. Now, you went from Widows, which was one kind of role. You've been in Within These Walls with Googie Withers. I remember that as well. Mm -hmm. Hard nut. Mm -hmm. Really having to stand up for yourself. And then I saw you in one of my favorite programs of all time with John Thaw, Kavanaugh oh, QC. Yes. As the judge. Yes, that was my. No, that, but that's my uh, Mitchell that was there a minute ago. Was that um, completely different? And the scene where you're at the bedside with the boy, actually just talking to him as a person, not what your parents are saying, not what anyone else is saying, not the lawyers. I just want to talk to you. And I was like, yeah, this lady's pretty special. Oh, well, I love doing that. I, I yeah. Love that. With Mr. John Thorne. Yes, who I've known. Who I knew since I was 20. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, when he was, he and, uh, well, I shared a flat with John, well, they shared a flat with me, John Hurt. Well, no, I yeah, have to get to this. Uh, this is a section all of its own. Uh, I mean. Yeah, we were, it was a group of young actors. And, um, yeah, I had the flat. I was the one who rented the flat. Right. And various actors. I think at one point, my telephone number was known throughout the whole of the profession, and actors would just turn up on my door. <laughs> so you friends. had the flat because, did you have the two children at that I time? I had only one child. Just the one at Just the one. Right. And, a girl, and I shared with a girlfriend. Right. She didn't have children, but we got this flat together, and we were actors, and uh, she, it, it was at that point, um, she had met John, uh, hurt, so through that, you know, a lot of Johns did. John, 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 the journey that yeah, got that you sweet. to be on that big screen, mm -hmm. where you were all jobbing actors together yeah. and, and hustling, yeah, we and were. We yeah, were. we were, you know, the people didn't have anywhere to sleep, they didn't have anywhere to live, they didn't have any money for rent. Exactly, you know? because as you said, you know, you were still working two jobs, exactly. looking after the children, yeah. and still trying to cast and sure. get the big yeah. job that's going to change everything. Exactly, and when. Um, Athel Fugard came over with right. Fakes Mokai for um, 
you know, the, bro the brothers play. Right. What, what it's called now. Um, they, that was extraordinary because Zakes, you know, coming out of South Africa and apartheid, mm. had never, he'd never experienced being in a situation where he wasn't um, constantly being, being watched, watched and yes. under, exactly. under and under surveillance exactly. and exactly. under exactly. the whip, basically. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You know, where, what are you doing here at this oh. time? And the, oh. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I remember him saying to me, this is extraordinary. Now, you did share a beautiful story with you sharing the flat with John Hurt. Yes. You didn't mention John Thor at the time. No, John, John Thor was, uh, he married a, a friend of mine called Sally Alexander. Right. And uh, that's how I knew John. But right. he didn't share the flat. He didn't share the flat. But right. you shared a story with you sharing with John Hurt. It's John Hurt, yeah. Yeah. And the. Murals, is it? On yes, the he, he was a painter, even yeah. then, John painted, and he loved painting. You see, yeah. take these facts in, because these are things that we don't know. That's why you need to talk to the legends to hear it from the horse's mouth. Who knew John Thor? Oh, Who could paint? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I think that people do now. Right, Certain okay. people, I think. Yeah. No, I'm not sure that the general public... Public now. He came out a little bit, but he was painting even then. Yeah, and he painted on the walls of uh, uh, the apartment we had, the flat we had. He painted on the walls. That was a very big thing in the 60s. Yeah. Um, and he painted a triptych of me, him, and uh, Nicole Williamson. And then in my room, he painted a lovely, uh, uh, he painted a portrait of me. Uh, but over the years, there's so much paint and you want paper and everything. Yeah. But I felt... And what happened was, a few years ago, it transpired that the soldiers in Chelsea Barracks, not the um, pensioners, right. but that at one point there were a lot of soldiers billeted there, right. and they too had painted on the wall in the 60s. They okay. painted various things, and they were, it was quite a remarkable thing, and there was going to be an exhibition, and I thought, I should have asked someone to come and take them down and, yeah. and John's work could have been exhibited. Because yeah. I mean, where was that apartment? In Mornington Crescent. Right, oh, so you're still kind of that area. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I lived in that apartment for 50 years. Wow. I brought my two children up there. And are they are they still there? Those the, those paintings that that's yeah, that's the point. They're there under all the wallpaper and paint. You gonna have to get experts oh, to get them. Yeah, tried exactly. everything. Good. No, I've left. No, I'm oh, moved. you've left, right? I moved. Yes, I did think. I did try. Actually, I did put the word out there, but yeah. it didn't happen. Mm, that's a shame. A bit yeah, of history yeah. lost there. And I'm those sure. people don't even know what they're getting under there. No, Sir John exactly. Hurt. It's such, Handiwork. It's such a shame, really. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. You just keep working and working and working, as you're saying. I mean, oh, it's amazing. Good. How do you find the energy? Because I know sometimes I'm exhausted, sure. shattered. Yeah, of course. I find, I find the energy, and, and I love working. I find I have to um, rest a day. Yeah. If I've been filming quite a bit, yeah. I have to take a couple of days. Yeah. Kind of to re recover. Yeah. And yes, to recharge. Yeah. I think. Now, do you do anything in particular to recharge? Meditation, just sleep, or sleep. yes. <laughs> Sleep a lot. That's my favorite. I have to say, I love my bed. I'm emotionally involved with my yeah. bed. So yeah, I, sleep I a lot. totally get it. I like walking. And I'm a great reader and watcher of movies. So that's how I wind up. It's almost as if when you're reading and still watching movies with great gusto, you're still honing your trade yes, almost. That's true. That's true. I can never watch anything without. Watching the professional eye, yeah. It's, it's something, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I can't. That's absolutely true. It's one of the reasons why sometimes I go to the theatre to see friends, you know, try to be there for them, you know, um, when I know what's going on. But sometimes it's difficult for me with the theatre because I know the workings of it. Right. So I can see. I can kind of see the joins, if you yeah. like. 
but ballet and opera, I'm a total innocent. So yes. that's wonderful for me. I'm going to the opera quite a bit now. Yes, you're going with an innocent eye. A total innocent, and the same for the ballet. Yeah. I don't know anything about it. I'm just like in awe. But theatre, I, I, I don't. Of course, I the work is. Joins. Yeah, exactly. The work is. Yeah. And I mean, have you done Shakespeare? Yes. Yes. Yes, I did. Um, I, I did a sh uh, Titus Andronicus. I did a production of that back in the day. This was the seventies, I think. And uh, we reopened the Roundhouse with it. The Roundhouse, oh, the roundhouse had been derelict there, yeah. for many years. Um, I think it won. Then that was what the hero rises up. I think we reopened that. Anyway, you see the repertoire is so bad, Stephen. She gets confused. Yes. <laughs> and I was a topless Tamara. Oh. And there's another interesting thing. I, I had this black wig that was very helped my modesty yes. and loads of beads, right? And a suede skirt kind of tied at the side. And Tim Curry had just come out of oh. drama school and he was a soldier in the production. And every night at five o'clock, he came in to paint my body. Mm -hmm. He did. And he did, he did some beautiful designs. So you come and paint your body, and then you'd have the wig yeah, yeah, down. Yeah, and the snakes and all of that. And then the wig would be arranged so that you could see arms um, yeah. like tattoos through it. But Tim did that. I, Tim I, Curry? Yeah, I'm deeply grateful for him. That was quite a thing to do for it. Another painter. Yes, another, <laughs> another painter. painter. Another painter. He enjoyed it. And, you know, we had great fun, well, he had great fun working out patterns and yeah. all of this. Yeah. But you are, no, more often than not find that creatives in general are multifaceted. They have more than one thing that they do that like play on true. instrument. That's very true. And I also think um, that everybody is creative. Yeah. Every single human being in the world is creative. Yeah. You, Sometimes you can find something whereby you can make a living in that form of creativity. But even to set a table is creative. To set it beautifully. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, to set, set it beautifully, yeah. To, to plait someone's hair, you know. It's just um, being able to hone in on the creativity and, of course, it be encouraged. Of course, that's what I mean. That's what I would like to encourage people to know. That's the thing. That everybody is creative. Seek out those people who will encourage you. Yes. And then if they do, go on to encourage someone else. So that's the legacy. So, yes, that's the legacy. Yeah, yes. that you can actually turn back and say, well, you know what, this one, if it wasn't for them, Exactly. There's a wonderful line in uh, Now Voyager with oh. exactly, that I've never forgotten. And it's when the child is sent, the child is sent to the same um, analytic respite, if you like. As her aunt. As, as Betty, Betty, Betty Davis, Davis yeah. yeah. And the child says to her at one point, Betty Davis just being very kind to the child, and the child says, why are you kind to me? And Betty Davis says, because someone was kind to me once. Yes. And I think that's so important. What a great movie that is. Oh, fantastic. She's like the one fantastic. that's always shunned and oh, the maiden aunt. Remarkable. <laughs> the maiden Transformation. Aunt. Yeah, like and then she gets off the boat and you see this big hat oh. and you're thinking, who's that? And it's, it can't be. And the shot is done from the ankles. That's right. Ah, <laughs> literally. Fabulous. You see, this is when you're talking to a master that knows. <laughs> fabulous. Amazing. <laughs> What can you leave us with that will inspire us and encourage us to be like you? Oh, um, I am not sure about like me. What do I feel and think of? I think be kind. I think the world at the moment is in great need of kindness and respect. Don't limit yourself uh, by, I'm not good at this, I'm not good at that, 
that's not me. Have the courage to try things. Seek out those people who are going to enhance your life and not be destructive towards you. Keep at it. I mean, if, you, if you're meaning, Barry, in this profession... In life in, in general, life in general, yeah. Keep going. Have faith. Have faith in the future. And know that times that are very, very difficult and can be... Challenging. Really yeah. Challenging and almost destroying will pass. Will pass if you find the strength within yourself and seek out others to people want to help. Yeah. They want to help. I think that's really important as you say, don't limit yourself because out there there are enough people who will put limitations oh, on you. Exactly. They're going to do it for you. They're going to do it for you. <laughs> yes, exactly. exactly. You know, so you have to kind of have faith in, as you say, have faith, but have, also have faith in yourself. Exactly. And I think yes. it takes most people quite a while in their life's journey, whatever their path may be, to get to the place where you think, I am actually as worthy as the next person. My story may not be yours or yours, exactly. but my story is my story too. And I have exactly. traveled and had a journey. Absolutely. And I'm as deserving. Uh, absolutely. And I also think uh, in an age of great individualism, I think it's very um, life enhancing. I think there's great growth by connecting yourself with a purpose, other than your own individuality yeah. and your own journey or goal. You know, we're, we're not alone. I mean, we, we need to help one another, all of us. Yeah. We need to be there for one another. And that means uh, some form of activism, yes. to be quite honest. It means joining, you know, joining against forces in the world that yeah. would that are full of hate. Yeah. So love. And you're very much an advocate of that, of diversity in yes. the industry, yes. because where I met yes. you was the Screen Awards. Yes, um, yes, of course. No, and I'm, I'm an ambassador for Act for Change. Yeah. And I have been involved all my life. I've been an activist. Activist of yes. some sort or yes. another. Yes, with the women's movement, gay liberation, uh, you know, civil rights movement. Yeah. And I've found that to be, um, Keeping, I found that to be well. It's highly motivating. It's, yeah, it's joyful, and, and you, yes, yes, because you're part, you're part of a greater whole yes. than just yourself. And the thing is, as you say, we many people think that it's just their journey, their story, oh. and it's about oh. me. But whether we like it or not, we are connected. Totally, Barry. For the simple reason we have to coexist in the same space. Exactly. exactly. But apart from that, you realize, well, you have a conversation and, oh, well, it's not even six degrees of separation anymore. Oh, it's more like two. I think it was two. Yeah, it's more like two. You know, somebody knows somebody that, yeah. oh, you know her as well. You know him as well. Exactly. Oh, I went there. Did yeah. you go there as well? I went there. Yeah. Might not have been at the same time, but yeah. so there's yeah, that yeah. mutuality. Oh, that Totally. And that shared experience. Experience. I remember Baldwin writing yeah. about how when he first went out from his home and the church, and the, the shock to him yeah. to find that others had suffered. Yeah. He was he was roommates with a couple of Jewish, a uh, couple of guys from a Jewish family, yes. and he said it was a a real beginning for him. Right. For, the, for not just the suffering for for himself, but for his community, and then beyond that. What a genius he oh, was. What a ge a genius. Um, you know, he said, he sent me, oh, he sent another story. My son, Che, was reading him, really, since the age of 11. Right. And I happened to meet Michael Thelwell, who was a very close friend of, uh, who wrote the novel, um, oh, Before the Fall, what's it called? The Great, there was the movie. Well, I can't remember it now, but there was a movie. Right. And then Michael Thelwell wrote the novel. 
Okay. So you'll have to look it up. I'll have to look it up now. <laughs> Research. <laughs> that will be an insert, don't worry. <laughs> and I was met Michael through a friend, and we became friends, and uh, I would... He adored Che. I loved Che because Che was like reading voraciously. Yeah, at that age. I mean, exactly. Baldwin, because exactly. that's quite heavy for, for an adult to, to really get, let alone a child of 11. And Michael got James Baldwin to sign a copy of, wow. uh, yeah, of Giovanni's room for Che, and somebody s stole it. No. Yeah. That's a great loss. Yeah. But I mean, what a great man he oh, was. Totally. Speaker. Totally. Writer, speaker, activist. I mean, look at Harry Belafonte. Look at look Still at going. Him. Still going. Still going in his 90s. Still going. Still going. Exactly. Still sharp as a knife. Absolutely. Still gorgeous. <laughs> still. still you know, it puts me reminiscent of my mother because she at 94 is still going, still sharp as a knife, we're lucky to say. Yeah. But, you know, still got that mind of, of defiance and that, and you realize that's what keeps you going. Yeah. Of course. But the best get involved. Yeah. What you have to become involved to make this world better. And, and is, also to keep what we've gained. Yes, and not let that slip away because all the time you see they're trying to chip away at the things that have been fought for. Exactly. Going backwards, trying to push back. Backwards, backwards yes. Yeah. You know? But what was the, the organization for change? It's called Act for Change. Act for Change, yes. right. Yes, that's, um, um, that's about bringing diversity. Yes, into... Um, I think, I mean, you'd have to speak to Martina, Tanya, you know, all the girls, but it, I think they feel too. It's the beginning to change. Well, it's yes, it is. Change. No question of that, I think. It is, definitely. Yeah. But, you know, you, you're looking at, because um, as we, we look back from the 70s, there were certain roles that you were in, certain black people had roles on TV. Absolutely. They had their own series. And in some ways, yes, things have changed and moved forward in some directions, but in others, you're thinking, yes, it's still a bit iffy here. I know, I know what you mean. Because the representation is still quite negative in some of the things, you know, it's a criminal or a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you think, that was one of the, uh, the great pluses of Chase. Yeah. You know, being so long. Yeah, well, being so long. He's, he's, he's come out of prison. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, a, he's a nice guy, made a mistake. You know, that that well. was a, a good movie. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, apparently it didn't get a lot of funding in the beginning uh, until after, after then, then Netflix <laughs> bought it. But, you know, in the making of it, and that was what was great about the question and answers, because you yeah. don't know these things unless yeah. you attend something it, like this that. This is true. This is true. And that's when you find out that the greatest projects, they have to fight and oh, struggle totally. for funding. And, totally. and then when the finished products, they, then somebody big like Netflix wants to come yeah, in yeah, and, yeah. and claim it. They claim it. Well, buy it. Well, yeah, buy it. <laughs> they did buy it. it. They bought it, yeah. It's hard to claim it. <laughs> but I think that's another thing. Like, get involved. And get involved and get out there. Yeah. And as you say, find out what is going on in whatever industry you're in, yes. whatever profession. Inform yourself. Be informed of what's going on. Well, it's on. always the adage, isn't it? Knowledge is power. <laughs> and then, then with that knowledge, you're empowered and you can empower other people by passing it yeah. on. Yeah. And, you know, that's why we need to speak to people like your fine self to find out really how it starts and that, you know, we're not all born with a silver spoon in our mouths. And, but we can still achieve if we're focused and we get the support. Sure. Sure. that we we need because yes. you know as you say you had that support with I had that with support your with, my parents, with your parents very yeah. much and so. your extended family yes yeah. yes very much so i had that support and i was so lucky that i've had a number of writers write for me and that's right. a tremendous honor for an actor yeah. it's a gift beyond anything that yeah you, can, you know and this but again, it fits like a, like a glove, like cogwheels. They write for you because they're like, yeah, she's the one. 
<laughs> you know, and it's because of the work that you've yes. put in. So it, yes. It, yes. it's a full, as you said earlier, it's full a, circle. It's a great, uh, it's a great it's gift. A, gift and a great yeah. gift and an honor for people to write for you and, and put you in that position yeah. well i know you're a busy girl <laughs> busy girl she's a busy girl thank you so much for taking thank the time to come sorry. and talk to us and enlighten us and inspire us and encourage us to be better people oh, thank you thank you for having me thank you so much thank it's my honor and pleasure really thank you really thank you very much for joining us if anything resonates with you in the show, please leave a message, contact us, let us know. We love to hear from you. Until next time, thank you very much and see you then.